Welcome to Finding Truth from Explain International. Yeah, well, my name is Hugh Ross. I was born, raised, and educated in Canada. I was not raised in a Christian home, but it's through my studies in astronomy and physics that I realized that there had to be a beginning to the universe, and that sent me on a quest to find the cosmic beginner. And it took me two years of going through the world's holy books and some of the writings of the great philosophers, uh, but I did sign my name in the back of a Gideon Bible dedicating my life to Jesus Christ. I was about 10 and a half years of age. They bought our family a big, thick book in evolutionary biology, hoping to get me to read something besides physics and astronomy. I was the only one in the family that read the book, but I told my parents, mom, dad, the numbers don't add up. We have all this life coming into existence before humanity and hardly anything new after humanity. Uh, but when I read the Bible at age 17, it answered the fossil record enigma. Why we see all these new phyla and classes and orders of life showing up uh, spontaneously uh, before humanity. And once humanity shows up on the scene, we don't see any of that at all. For six days, God creates. On the seventh day, he stops creating and explains why. When God created Adam and Eve, there were 8,000 different species of mammals. And since then, not a single new one has shown up, but 4,000 have got extinct. We only have half the mammal species today that we had at the time that God created uh, human beings. So that was a breakthrough for me. For six days, God creates. On the seventh day, he stops. That's the day he's gonna redeem billions of humans unto himself. And when that's completed, we go into the eighth day when he creates again, the new creation. And uh, none of us are theistic evolutionists. You also got this new thing called evolutionary creationism. And uh, they believe God was involved, uh, but in a way that can't be discovered. We believe that God's fingerprints are all over the creation. We can actually scientifically investigate and establish that God did intervene uh, through specific uh, creation miracles. See in the article two, the Belgic Confession, God reveals himself through two books, the book of nature and the book of scripture. And it comes from the same God for whom it's impossible to lie or deceive, which implies that both books are utterly trustworthy and reliable in revealing truth about God, about his attributes, about his creation, uh, about his plans for us. Now, it's structured in such a way that each book corroborates the other, which means we do not expect total overlap. So we shouldn't expect that the Bible addresses everything that science addresses mm. or that science addresses everything the Bible addresses. There's gonna be overlap. And that region of overlap allows us to use one book uh, to corroborate and test the other. In the future, we're going to have 25 hours in the day and not just 24 hours. It's slowing down. Uh, but what's interesting is the moon slowed it down to 24 hours at the very moment when the sun entered maximum luminosity stability and minimal flaring activity, which is exactly what you need for human civilization to thrive on the Earth. So those two time windows, as narrow as they are, met together at just the right time, uh, thanks to the effect of the moon on Earth's rotation rate. And so... You know, uh, the next book I got coming out, Design to the Core, and it's also in my book, uh, Weathering Climate Change, I make the point that there's these multiple things going on that God controls over the history of the earth, where you got a dozen narrow time windows, all essential for human uh, thriving on planet earth, that all happen to coincidentally line up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in naturalistic science that would ever predict that. Naturalistic science would have these time windows uh, very much apart from one another, but they all line up at exactly the time that God created Adam and Eve uh, here on earth. That's one reason why I argue that Adam and Eve must be a relatively recent creation by God, because if you put Adam and Eve significantly before, or for that matter, significantly after, you miss those narrow time windows.